Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. My name's Mark Walker, and we're going to be looking at this week's best sales. Thanks to all the new subscribers, but also you guys that have been with the channel for ages. We've reached 190,000 subscribers, which is incredible. And we've got some amazing videos for you this week, including one, all of, well, two actually, all about JRPGs. Now, I'm going to be on holiday for a week, slacking, which is nice. It's a lovely weekend here in sunny Essex. The sound of my baby boy screaming in the background and another torrential shower outside. Happy days. A big grats to the person who's won a free game this week. Your name is on the screen right now. Just send us an email. I've got a nice challenge for you all if you want to be in for winning the next week's game. Just pop in the comments the game that you should recommend that others avoid at all costs because it's terrible and make sure you give a reason as well because we don't just want to bash things because they're called Balan Wonderworld <laughs> because they're bad um so yeah nice one what's on sale well let's find out now as I'm sure you're aware Sega are in the process of celebrating Sonic and they're also reducing lots of their other games and doing some sneaky little integrations. One of our favourite games on the channel is Two Point Hospital. The Jumbo Edition was released recently with all of the DLC and to celebrate they've dropped the price by 32%. Takes it down to 23 which might sound like a lot of money but if you're a fan of the old school theme hospital game you'll absolutely love this. Now we've got a full review of it from Glenn on the channel but this version includes Bigfoot, Pebbly Island, Close Encounters and Off the Grid. As well as just now they're releasing the costumes for Sonic the Hedgehog as well as some different items to deck out your hospital. It's an outstanding game though, it captures that old flavour while still managing to add in lots of new strange illnesses. You're building different machines, building up your hospital and it's an incredibly addictive game. If you've got a bit more to spend in the sale then I would suggest this as one of the best picks of the week. Check out the review, link in the top pin comment. This could act as the hidden gem for this week for sure. It's called Star Renegades. It received a lot of negative feedback at launch because it had some serious issues that needed patching, but the developers have since released a few patches and it runs much better now. The best part of it for me is that combat system. It's actually a little bit like Fuga Melodies of Steel, which I just reviewed on the channel. You have a timeline at the top of the screen and certain attacks will knock back enemies so that you'll get to then perform another turn before them. There's loads of different characters that you gradually unlock and each of them has their own abilities. And personally, I love this art style. I think it's absolutely delightful. Again, I'd suggest checking out the full review of this one, but if it tickles your fancy, then just know that the patch has improved things massively. It's 3.0 gigs, not massive, and that sale goes on until August the 4th. For those of you obsessed with Metroidvanias, Dan Dara, if you haven't already played it, is possibly in the top 5 across any platform. They then released the Trials of Fear edition, which included an entirely new set of areas to explore, new bosses, new powers and mechanics. Now, the best thing about this game is just the way you traverse the world. It might look really odd, and I guess it is. You kind of grapple to the different surfaces and the world rotates and spins. It's a really fast and fluid game and it's just lovely and massively underrated in my opinion. It's only 1.4 gigabytes to download. You're looking at around about 10 hours to complete it, but with the new content, that's gonna go up quite a bit. And that sale is on until August the 4th. It's 65% off, down to £4.72. Then we've got THQ Nordic's Darksiders Warmastered Edition, 55% off, taking it down to £12.14. This is essentially Zelda, but dark, and with one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse as the main character. The combat is super chunky, it's a very visceral game, you'll be fighting giant beasts and monsters, but it's so slick on the Switch, you've got a 60 frames per second performance mode, you can switch over to a quality mode that's also locked out at 30, and there are several dungeons of sorts that you have to work through, but it's that great combat for me that is the standout. Just make sure you've got the 13 gigs you'll need to download it. Now I may or may not know that they're already working on some more content for Blue Fire on the Nintendo Switch and it was a game that I personally loved. It combined my favourite game of all time, Hollow Knight, into something that was 3D and maybe a little bit more accessible. I wouldn't say it's as good as that game but it's certainly enjoyable enough and in my full review I praised the movement, 
I thought it could have been a little bit more intricate, but I really liked the different trials. So there's platforming trials you can complete, and they range from the relatively simplistic to the brutally difficult. But they're also really compelling because the controls are so good, just trying to reach those distant platforms and maybe failing. And there are some great boss fights in here as well. Yeah, like this one a lot, 40% off. It's the cheapest it's ever been. It is well worth a tenner. That goes on until August the 11th. Man, Glenn was telling me how he went down to South End on Sea this weekend and was playing at the arcades, and it got me nostalgic for some old school style beat em up action, so I went and played some Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the complete edition on Switch, and it's currently also on sale at 35% off, taking it down to £7.79, and ah, uh, it's just great. I love those cartoony visuals. It carries the Scott Pilgrim sense of humour, and it's also brilliant just giving the kids a controller and bashing your way through the game, not really caring how well you do, but having a few laughs along the way. It's only 1.1 gigs, it's very well presented, it's, it's well polished. Glenn's reviewed this one as well for us, and that sale goes on until August the 15th. As far as value goes for this week, I think trying the Ultimate Collection 80% off down to, well, just under £8 for four games is the best value, probably by a country mile. You can play them on your own or you can play them with four people locally or online. This can all be done on one Switch, so you don't need to worry about multiple copies of the game. And each of the four different characters has their own abilities that will help you with the puzzle solving. Some of the entries aren't as good as others, and it's debatable as to which ones people prefer, but I think we can all agree that at £8, this is ridiculous. Just thinking back to when I reviewed Trine 4 and it was 30 quid at launch on its own. They also look lovely. They have a really nice art style, and generally the performance is decent on the Switch. Now this ends in 30 hours. You haven't got a great amount of time. If you want to jump on it, you better be fast. Our next Sega game then, and it's Team Sonic Racing. A little bit like Mario Kart, except there's almost a co-op aspect to it, where you have different racers and they work together. Of all the kart games on Switch, this and Mario Kart are by far at the top in my opinion. It does have offline 1-4 to four player, but there's also online for up to 12 people. I really liked the mechanics here, and there's a story, almost a story single player experience, where you're working from stage to stage, that I thought was decent. There's tons of content here, again it's its lowest ever price obviously celebrating the Sonic and it's 75% off taking it down to £8.74 man it's definitely a decent sale this one and it goes on until August the 8th Another big hitter from THQ Nordic is Battle Chasers Night War. This describes itself as an old school JRPG, and I think what it means is it has old school turn-based combat, and that's just fine by me. It does get a little bit grindy by the end of the game, but I loved getting there. I thought it was brilliant. It has an overworld map that's a little bit like the... What's that Witcher game called? Oh, the isometric one. Oh, that's going to really annoy me. Someone please tell me in the comments. But it has an overworld map that's like that. There's different towns and villages that you can visit to make purchases. And there are six different heroes that you'll find along the way. I seem to recall this has some of the best cutscenes as well. They just look fantastic. And obviously it's based on the comic book from the 90s of the same name. It's 2.6 gigabyte download. You're looking at about 40 to 80 hours of gameplay here. It does get a bit grindy towards the end, but I still think it's well worth it for a tenner. We've got the outstanding Sonic Mania, which might as well be Sonic 4. It was developed by Christian Whitehead, and if I'm not mistaken, Team Sonic were actually so impressed by him and his vision for, for where the series could go that, yeah, they, they took him on and, and he created this. What's even more crazy is that he was actually part of the hacking community and he presented a playable code to the producer of Sonic, who was then so impressed, well, here we are with Sonic Mania. I wonder if that would have happened um, with uh, Mario. <laughs> Methinks not. 
He also was able to introduce some new moves into the series, which I mean, that's a big deal, right? But some of these stages are just outstanding. They feel like they're part of the main line. I mean, they are part of the main line, but fair play to Team Sonic for spotting just the passion that he had really to bring the series back to, well, let's be honest, it's had a few iffy outings and this is by far one of the best games. It's only 390 megs. You can do one or two player and it's seven pounds 99. What a bargain. This is Bella's pick for the week. It's the one we've been playing through, but I think it's also my pick. I mean, you just, you just can't go wrong. What an absolute classic. There are a few other good games on sale that you might want to consider. Things like Children of Mortar at its lowest ever price of £7.91. Civilization 6, that's just over 12 quid. The Bioshock Collection. But now it is your turn. You are doing the avoids this week. And what I'll do is pin a comment, the one that's had the most likes, and you'll get a free game. So, you tell me, what are the games that you should avoid on Nintendo Switch and why? Maybe give us one or two, it's up to you. And make sure you like a few other people's comments so that the cream rises to the top. Oh, and avoid Bell and Wonderworld, it's terrible. <laughs> It simply had to be done. A thanks to our patrons, you guys are amazing. We've had another one join, I saw your name pop up today, so thanks. Hopefully I've managed to redo the Patreon credits to get you in there. And just a big thanks to everyone who supports the channel. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!